Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am financial planner Canna Campbell and today I want to talk about a topic that's really close to my heart and that is minimalism. Today I want to share with you an introduction to help get you started in finding your feet with this incredible lifestyle shift. Hi everyone, so as explained, I want to talk to you today about minimalism, particularly for someone who is starting their journey around minimalism and is feeling a little bit confused or overwhelmed or doesn't really know what this powerful movement is really about. So let's break it down together. So minimalism really begins with the concept of quality over quantity intentionally looking at the quality of an item to make sure that it goes the distance for you. It serves you, it works for you, it adds value in your life for the long run. For example, investing in a beautiful handbag that you absolutely love rather than lots of cheaply made, poor quality, flimsy, tacky bags that may fall apart very quickly. So you actually think about investing in something that's going to go the distance and something that's going to be a part of your life that you absolutely love. And this at times may mean spending a little bit more, but quite often it ends up being the best return on your investment because it lasts so much longer. Two, versatility. Versatility is a really easy way to, excuse the pun, ease your way into minimalism. You see, when you choose something that is versatile, it can be used in different ways. So it serves lots of purposes and adds lots of value and function to your life, which adds so much value in so many different ways. So for example, say I need a jacket and I decide to go and buy, for example, a leather jacket. I would pick a leather jacket that can be styled and worn in many different ways so that I can use it for different occasions, I can wear it with different outfits, it goes with what I already own, and of course, bringing back that concept of quality over quantity, it would be really well made. Now, this concept of versatility can be applied to so many things in your life, from signing up to subscriptions, to buying gadgets, to buying items for your wardrobe, even some beauty care and skincare products. They can be multifunctional, and that makes them versatile. Three, intentional. So for me, this is very much the essence, the lifeblood of minimalism, about being intentional. Actually deciding, proactively deciding, deciding after you've really thought everything through about what you want to do, what you want to have, what you want to include around you, what you want to consume, what you want to hold on to, and of course, what you want to release, and what you have chosen to outgrow or grow away from. By pressing pause and stopping and slowing down and actually breaking down what is important to you means that you start living your life with greater intention. Instead of just rushing to the shops and buying lots of things, you turn up to the shops with intention. You know what you want and why. You enjoy the process. It allows you to be a lot more present and a lot more mindful. And quite often from that, we find the whole experience so much more joyful and pleasurable. And we actually get a great sustainable appetite fulfillment where we don't feel the need to rush back out and do something all over again because we've been so incredibly connected with that particular moment that it actually fills our cup in a sustainable way well into the long run. Four, acknowledgement of lightness. This is one that I feel that people aren't in tune with, which is why they sometimes revert back to their old way of living. I guess that's why they say old habits die hard. But if you can take a moment, an intentional moment, to stop and think about what values, what blessings, what benefits minimalism has brought into your life since you've begun, where you can actually take a moment to step back, you will actually find the joy and you will create a greater sense of dedication and commitment to this incredible movement and lifestyle shift in your world. It's kind of like decluttering a room. You can remove a whole pile of excessive furniture. Now, if you're not taking a moment to acknowledge the new space, 
the new energy of that room, how it feels more organized, how the room now feels bigger. Maybe it even feels like it's lighter and brighter because there's less stuff cluttering and creating shadows in that space. If we don't do that, quite often we can revert to our old ways and then we go out to the shops again and fill it up with a whole pile of new decorative pieces and before we know it, we've got a cluttered home again. But when you stop and take a moment to actually see, wow, this is actually feels more organized. This feels more harmonious, this new room with less stuff in it. I can find things more easily. I feel more relaxed. I feel like I can come here and focus. I feel like I can come here and relax because I'm not drowning in stuff. That moment of acknowledgement where you can actually see the benefits that are flowing into your life by doing this intentionally is incredibly powerful. And I feel like this is what has allowed me to incorporate minimalism in the long run. And for me, I've been incorporating this into my life for about no, ooh, just over nine years now. Five, the journey. Since falling into Millism, the space of Millism has really changed in good ways and in bad ways. Sometimes it's been like a double-edged sword where Millimism for some people has been competitive and filled with judgment. Like it's the race to see who can own the less stuff or have the smallest wardrobe. That's not what Millimism is. There's also become an element of judgment saying, well, you're not really a minimalist because you have a hundred shoes. This is exactly the opposite of what minimalism is. Minimalism is about letting go of judgment, embracing the journey and really respecting one another. Because when we respect one another, we actually create space and less distraction and less anxiety and less overwhelm in our world. And it's really important that we respect each other's journey. That person that might have a hundred shoes may actually have come from previously owning a thousand shoes. So it's important that we respect each other's journeys as well as our own. There is no hard and fast rules with minimalism. It is very personal, it is very private, and it is very subjective. So you just focus on you and what you're gaining from this, what you're learning that you enjoy letting go of, and what you're enjoying actually holding on to and keeping in your life. That is the essence of minimalism. Six, possession. So I was reading the other day that the self-contained storage industry in Australia alone is a $1.5 billion industry, which I find fascinating because we are also dealing with a cost of living crisis, or as I call the cost of living challenge here in Australia. So all these people have valuable things locked away that we're paying up to say $300 per month to have stored away from us. So with minimalism, it is not about just taking your stuff and just parking it somewhere else because that essentially is just spreading your stuff. It's actually not about learning to live with less or creating clarity in your life. That's just shifting the problem. And in fact, you end up running the risk of by shifting the problem, creating space to then have the problem multiply. So with minimalism, it's about really looking at your true possessions and where your possessions are and taking ownership as to what you really want to keep in your life and keep close to you and what you want to responsibly release. Now that doesn't mean you have to just throw it away and add it to landfill. There are plenty of ways of doing this in a respectful way that's in alignment to minimalism, such as donating things or selling things. In fact, the average Australian household has over $5,000 worth of unused, unwanted and unloved items in their home. So if you want to go down this path, have a look at your possessions, where they are and whether they really do need to stay in your life and whether you're not just falling into that trap of just spreading your stuff and just thinking and pretending that you are a minimalist. Take true ownership of this. And then finally, number seven, faith. Minimalism is a very powerful movement and it's, there's a reason why so many people have picked this up around the world and it has made a huge transformation in so many people's lives, including my own, particularly around my mental health. But the thing with minimalism is at times it is very confronting and even scary at times. You feel uncomfortable, it really does make you peel back the layers and question who you are and what's important to you and what you want to stand for. And also, you've got to also hand your faith over to the journey and really let minimalism lead you and guide you because it does take you to a better place. So as uncomfortable as it may be at times, 
The great thing about melanism is when you hand over your heart, you hand over your faith, it really is quite beautiful where you land. And the new, better, more powerful, more joyful pleasures and experiences that do come rushing to you from this incredible movement. So for anyone that is interested in melanism, is dipping their toe or is feeling a little bit overwhelmed or confused, I really hope this helps you understand what this is really all about. And please let me know about how you're going with your journey into melanism and what you'd like me to share with you more about my journey. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next Thursday. Make sure you're subscribed, of course, and make sure that notification bell is switched on. And of course, you can follow me on Instagram and of course, TikTok. Ciao for now.